Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome, welcome. Today we're going to do a game review on the latest game called Patron. All right. So when you look at um, this game, uh, it has some interesting um, download content, mods, manual. Um, the game is fairly easy to learn how to play. So uh, I myself already made a, a file in which I already played it. I mean, um, it's a bit of a, I guess, medieval-ish, pre-medieval-ish kind of building game. The music is also a little bit medieval-ish. So, you know, like, in overall, I think, you know, that um, the graphics of the houses and the trees and the buildings and the mountains, they all look uh, rather uh, nice. So, um, I've been playing this game for a bit now. And I just wanted to do discuss, you know, like my feelings about the game and how I've been enjoying slash um, having issues with this game. Loading also takes, you know, like not that much time. Of course, it depends on your system, but I think, you know, that relatively wise, it it doesn't really take uh, a lot of time to load. So, um, this game is pretty much, you know, top view, you can rotate a little bit. And the whole goal of the game is to uh, build a society in the middle of nowhere on some sort of godforgotten island. So you have like a, a couple of islands that you can choose from. and. Um, uh, what you do is, you know, you start out um, building uh, little houses. Wow, this guy is walking on water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, let's say that would be <laughs> like a first issue of the game. It's Jesus! It's Jesus who's walking on water! Jesus lives and has arisen. It's the second coming of Jesus, yes. Um, as you can see, you know, like, um, the people in my town aren't very happy because I'm not loyal to the king. So what happens if, um, really traditional views, like religious views, loyalty to king, all those things that mattered in the heydays of human society but practically have no value anymore nowadays so you can actually you know um, go to the um, uh, people and you can sort of like uh, have a look at their happiness uh, there are different classes peasant laborer merchants and gentry so gentry would be like the ultra high class. Yeah, the posh, the unofficial nobility concerned mostly with their high end manufacturing and providing services. So, what you can see is, you know, that um, I have not been loyal to the <laughs> loyal to the king. And people in those days are not happy about me not being loyal. So you can increase your loyalty by doing several favors to the king. And there are like all kinds of social issues, health, safety, immigration, loyalty, religion, education, basic goods, luxury goods, taxes and housing. Now you can see that most of my stuff is pretty much top notch, except you know for immigration and loyalty. Yeah, the, the people aren't that happy, you know, when there's like a huge influx of immigrants to town. Now, I wanted just to get it off my chest, you know, something that has been 
bothering me to the max, to the max. And why I haven't enjoyed this game so much. So, in this game, there are people living in the houses, yeah? But a consistent problem in this game is that there's not enough people. There's not enough people. There are not enough people. There are not enough people. So when you start out this game, you'll have to wait a very, 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 very long time before any new people are you know, born or coming to the working age. And, you know, you know, like one advantage, I would say, you know, like since, <laughs> since it's uh, medieval times, child labor is pretty much allowed, you know, like when you're like 12 years old, you are considered an adult. Yes, you're an adult. You're ready to have sex, and you're ready to have another family of your own, and you're ready for the big, harsh <laughs> world at the ripe age of 12 years old. <laughs> yeah. So, like, um, you can see that basically on the um, on on the list, and you can see all the people. That are here. So, like, what's very important are the young people over here. So, here are like a bunch of 11 years old, meaning, you know, that like the next year they will become 12 years old and they will all be ready to join the working force. Great, you might think. But the big problem is, you know, at this moment, I'm having like 17 people still left and, and that is a lot but it also highlights the problem of the game that in the beginning you have way too little people way too little people and you'll be you know like fighting against the imbalance of this game to constantly wait for people to mature and to finally become 12 years old it takes such a long time it takes such a long time it takes forever and that is what I really hate about this game um, for instance uh, there is also a game so like I don't know if I don't know if if uh, anyone knows it but you know like there's like a game called uh, strongholds now so for instance if you had like stronghold 2 and you'll just have like you know a sort of like gameplay of, of this lord. kind of things Can't play snap there, my lord. and what it was you know that you had like um. if you can see like over here these small little houses where the peasants would live and Every single minute or so, you know, like new people were born and, you know, new people were created, so to speak. Now, I would agree that, yes, that isn't so super realistic, you know, like people don't mature that quick. People don't age that quick. In reality it takes also like an extreme amount of time but you know you're a gamer right you're, you're playing a game and who who on earth you know like would want to wait for hours and hours and or like it feels like you're waiting years on end you know just to get you know like new people in into your community so like if this game the patron game would actually stimulate it and that you know more people would be born every 
single, well, I would at least, you know, reduce growing up time by five or something like that. It just takes way too long. It just takes way too long. And, and as a result, it's very difficult to build up your society. Okay, so that is like the first really huge problem of this game. The secondary big problem of this game is that it's not worthwhile to put a lot of the buildings in the game. So, for instance, um, let's say you have a, a production building and there's many production buildings like the, um, if I can find the thing, a clay pit, yeah. Let's say you have a clay pit over here, right? Now, just for the sake of showing it, it's not even efficient to put it here, but you know, just for, for, the, for, for showing it. So I put, a, put like a, a, a clay pit over here. And let's make it, you know, like a priority to, to build this thing. Yeah. And I must admit, okay, there is such a thing as a, you know, skip, skip time button. But even, you know, like when you skip time and, you know, make the house like a, a super priority, it takes such a godload amount of time before stuff is built. <sighs> look, 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 look at them go, look at them go, you know. So my, my speed is now 10. And so this would mean like many years later, finally a worker comes, you know, to start building the building, you know? Okay, so here comes basically the secondary problem, you know? So let's say you want to build clay. Now the, the upkeep of this building is extreme, you know? It takes like 120 coins, 80 tools, and 80 stones per worker per year. Now you can um, increase production by um, paying with tools, stone, and coins. Now, here I sort of do it rather easily, but like in the beginning of the game, it's like so hard to actually manage to do that. So, the basic problem is that from an economic uh, point of view, and I'll show that to you, the price of tools is three yes so prices go from one two and three uh, actually up to seven but three is actually a very expensive price so like rather than that you would actually build a clay factory if you start looking at bricks, bricks only cost like two. So, from an economic point of view, it makes much, much more sense to import bricks rather than buying them, you know, with your you know, own, you know, like, how to say that? So like rather than rather than sacrificing your own tools for the upkeep and 160 stones. Because like the 160 times three and you know the 160 times one plus the 240, it's actually a very, very expensive price. And what you have left is you know like only uh, seven eight hundred and forty uh, clay per year so what what does that mean you know from an economic um, you know point point of point of view uh, where is it where is it 
Um, calculator. Oh. So let's let's say you know you have like three sixty. Um, plus you have to do the two hundred and forty times uh, three, which is you know like you know plus seven hundred and twenty plus two hundred and forty. So so what you actually get, you know, is like a economic disadvantage rather than a economic advantage in comparison to making this stuff by yourself so so what happens is that you're actually going backwards you actually you're actually going you know backwards almost so i think i think the clay let me have a quick look at it again um uh, so the clay is like worth two, right? So it's 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 like almost you know like eating up like half of the money that you invest in it. But that is not even you know like the end of the story, right? So clay in itself is pretty useless. What you need next to that is another um, a brick brickworks, yeah, and a a entity that can actually, you know, convert the stuff into into something useful, yeah. So we'll speed up time again. Again, it's gonna. I mean. It's sort of what I really hate about this game, that it really just eats up your time. <sighs> so here we have, you know, like, tons of people working in the mine. They're working hard. <laughs> so you can just sort of, like, see how irritating it feels, you know, how long you have to wait. Uh, okay. The king set us regards. Yeah, this is this is nice. The king has sent over a ship full of goods for our fair city. He's clearly pleased with us. Twenty-three lumber and cider. Twenty-five. Yeah, for my for my city, you know, from <laughs> I have like one hundred and ten thousand. It, it means it means absolutely nothing to me. The gifts of the king. Yeah, I'm not that loyal to the king. I want to have control over my own life. So, yeah, a lot of time passes, basically. Nobody is doing anything. So, so you know, you have to wait for a worker to come. Yeah. So, like, only... And that is, like, one of my other irritants with the game. Only, only, only if you make this a priority, a worker will finally come, you know. It, 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 it might take even, like two to three times longer if you don't make it a priority but you know it's weird because like nothing else in this city needs to be built except for this building here why does it take so fucking long why you know um you know that is like uh, another ir irritance of the game so yeah okay finally finally my brickwork has been has been created uh, expansion, 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 furnace, furnace. Wow, I, I cannot even do furnace three. Did I actually run out of all my iron? Okay, let's uh, let's go to the to the docks and I don't know buy like a bunch of iron. Which bring me to the next irritants of this game. Uh, here, you know, with the resources. There is some sort of alphabetical system in it, but it just doesn't make any sense. So, at least not to me. So, like, you go from A to, uh, I don't know, letter V. 
And then all of a sudden you go back to the letter A, Apple, C, D, E, F, M, L, O, T, W, Oats, and all of a sudden you have clay, and then bean, bricks, cabbage. So, so in other words, you know, like, if the developers of Patron would just make this list into alphabetical order, that would save a lot of time in searching. And another thing that they better do is sort by quantity, price, and, well, not necessarily fee. Fee is usually the same. I mean, that, that way you can see what, you know, letter, you can easily go to the letter M, X, Y, Z, or whatever. Or you could, you know, just look at the price, what would give you the most yields for the product that you're having. And even up to today, you know, I don't understand, you know, like the trade deals much, but um, I didn't read the manual either. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a bastard. I, I never read manuals of games. I just want to play, you know? Um, I would say that that would cover quite a lot of um, things about this game in the sense that, you know, about my uh, complaints. Well... I've been talking about the bad stuff a lot. Let's talk about the good stuff. So, what I like, you know, is the design of the houses and the buildings in general. They look very cute and um, they have a rather realistic um, uh, sign to it. I guess I just don't like it, you know, that the workers are always like, oh, I'm, I'm so tired, I'm not doing anything, you know? No. I don't know. Um, secondary, you know, really cool is that you can build like your own mansion once you go through the daunting task of uh, completing all the research. Going through the entire research list uh, takes uh, quite some time, but it uh, gives you interesting options as you develop your own city and your own capability. Uh, by building churches, or in this case, you know, like a cathedral, you can increase the happiness and reduce the impact of negative events in a larger radius of a church. So, um, building efficiently in this game is rather important. What you most likely want to do is, you know, like, um, creates one line, sort of like a straight line of the most important buildings, which have like an impact and therefore grab all the surrounding houses that they influence. Circular influence is very important for markets or church or slash cathedral buildings cemeteries, um, places that um, the people need as a facility to do certain things which influence your economy. Make sure that you place them in the center, including schools, you know. Um, when I was sort of building this school, I didn't really know what I was doing much at the time. Uh, so this school only has like a very limited area. So I build another school that has also like an influence of this area. You can increase the amount of uh, student slots in your uh, game. <clears throat> so uh, as I said before, this game consists basically out of four classes, peasant, laborers, merchants and gentry. I still don't have any gentry in my city, 
I don't know why, I don't understand this game in the sense that uh, what actually initializes the gentry. I, I only own this game, you know, like for what, two weeks or something like that. Um, but I, I pretty much, you know, managed to <coughs> live without the gentry and, and you know, create this uh, city over here. So, in order to be economical viable, what I did was just create fisheries only. And also a ton of herbalists. Now, what you can do with these herbalists is that you can gather herbs from the forest and they sell for a price of two per piece. Yeah, in this way, I could manage to generate income by selling them at the harbor. So I would always be selling herbs for a price of two. And you have to... that's also a little bit interesting. You know, I was also thinking that could also be an improvement of the, of the game. Because, uh, like, at this point, you know, if you want to sell stuff, you have to say minus... 700 right and then you have to press trades and then it starts to send off the goods and you get your money immediately which is good you don't have to wait all the time but i was just thinking you know like if you could just have like a separate buy or sell let's say i only have pressed like a button here on sell and i would like sell 700 you know then i could just say i'm selling 700 rather than having to type minus 700 i don't know why they why they did it like that so that's a bit that's a bit of a of a, of a weird thing yeah one moment i'm getting hungry mm. This is cookie. Oh. No. So I started some farms as well. Um It's autumn now, so you can't really see well. Well no, no almost winter. But basically these are my farm fields and they create like um, wheat. Oh, yeah, you can actually see the farmer collecting the, the wheat of the harvest time. Yeah. Uh, which uh, the farmer will bring, you know, to the windmill. The windmill will create the flour. Uh, the, the flour will go, you know, to the bakery. And the bakery can either make bread or cookies. Now. The cookies are absolutely, you know, the pretty much the most valuable item that this game has that you can just, like, produce. If I can find the damn cookies. Um, yeah, here it is. The cookies sell for a whopping 7 price. So, if you can manage to make a lot of cookies, you can manage to make a lot of money, you know. But so far, I think, you know, all my people are constantly eating all the cookies, so I can't... <laughs> I couldn't manage to sell any of that uh, so far. Yeah. Nom, 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 nom. Oh my god. Bam. These cookies are delicious. <clears throat> Another disadvantage of this game is that you you have to buy stuff for your people. Um, people want luxurious items like clothes, pottery, furniture and flowers for the peasants. Uh, for the laborers, the merchants and gentry as well. And that's gonna cost you a lot of money. Oh. 
That's really the counter. So you constantly have to, like, buy a bunch of clothes or something like that. You constantly have to buy them, buy them flowers. Sorry, I'm suffocating. Let me drink something. <sighs> so you know that is that is like a big big disadvantage of this game, I think, because it it, it costs quite a lot, you know, to buy all these things and. It sets your economy backwards. So what you might start to notice is that this game is pretty difficult, you know, in terms of uh, balancing. It's pretty difficult in terms of balancing. And I think that especially in the beginning, it's very hard to overcome uh, the lack of people and the lack of materials and you constantly need to fight against the negativity in order to build up your society which makes it challenging but i just wish you know the people would grow up a little quicker albeit i already said that so i will digress um yeah what else to say you know it's winter now it looks rather you know cute with all the windmills and stuff and, yeah, you know, like, as a person who played Stronghold um, 1, 2, and 3, I must say that I like this game, but, you know, somehow I also would like it if you could build, like, castles or something like that. Well, it's not, it's not really a, how to say, a war game or anything, you know, um... Everything here is uh, quite peaceful, you know, even if the people are like protesting It's not like they will burn the town hall down. They just complain They pretty much complain forever But that is basically all what they do, you know, they, they don't I mean they, they sometimes start rioting and what else but you know, they, they don't really destroy stuff so, in that sense, you know, this game is uh, still rather peaceful. In terms of, uh, you know, building, you can also do, like, beautification, you know. So you can't, like, uh, build small ponds, decorational tree, plazas, gazebos, fountains, statues, hedges, parks. Yeah, so you can add some decoration and, you know, that will... That will increase, you know, the, the happiness of the, the people uh, living around it. Um, normally, you know, like, uh, the marketplace needs, like, a, a lot of houses. Uh, for every house that is in its vicinity, you get, like, uh, money from the market. So the market is also a very important economical tool. And, uh, yeah, you know, for each uh, market that you build, you can uh, earn more money. So that is that is also, like, a, a way to increase your income uh, in this game. But I must say, one thing that I myself did um, was, you know, like, create a lot of fisheries. Because there, there are, like... Uh, two things that cause economic collapse that you always have to be careful of in this game. One is the amount of food and the secondary one is the amount of firewoods. If any of those goes down to zero, you're literally screwed. If the food runs out, your people will die. And if there's not enough firewoods, they will die from cold in the winter. As a result, it's very important to build decent houses that also are like insulated because it's another aspect of the game is that you want to build any given building in this game and always make sure that you invest the money to reduce the upkeep 
because on the long term it will save you lots of money and lots of um, materials that you don't have to waste. So that that is like important. Uh, well, next to that, I would say that um, medication is important. You know, make sure that you have herbs. At least you need to have some herbs so that the people have like materials to keep them healthy. Because like in a cold winter like this, you know, your your citizens will become sick and they will be suffering. And that's not a good thing, so you want to have, like, uh, herbs at least. Um, once you become a little bit more richer, you can actually buy medication. Which does a better job. Uh, but, you know, like, uh, um, for the time being, you know, if you can just survive with herbs, that you should be fine. So most important too, food and firewood. Next to that comes herbs. And if you become rich, grab some medication as well. So that is like um, an important aspect of the game. So be careful selling your food and selling your firewood because if you run out, you're, you're pretty much screwed. So that said, always do a lot of effort to get a lot of food and a lot of firewood and secondary my tactic is you know like to get like a lot of herbalists which create you know the income which i can then you know like utilize in order to get like a lot of uh money from the harbors you would want to build in the beginning at least one to two harbor ish you know at least one and expand the amount of harbors as you have uh, while you're going through the game because pretty much harbors are your most important uh, source of income you can uh, upgrade them so that you can trade more items you can increase the speed which is very necessary because the speed you know that it takes before ships actually come is fucking forever <laughs> it takes so such a goddamn long time amount of time before the, the items finally come in you can just you can actually see you know like how slow this bar goes there's almost no progress to be seen in it. It does go, but it's it's just relentlessly uh, slow. Another problem of this game is actually the amount of inhabitants in a house. Rather than, you know, like in, in, in Stronghold, you would have just like... People will fill up a house, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or something like that. And that is it. But Patron is different. Patron works with a family system. So rather than, you know, stuffing, stuffing, stuffing this house, you know, to the brink with people, you'll have a family living here. So a family lives here, a family lives here, a family lives here, not a, a fa family lives here, family lives here. So what you what you get is that you'll have like open space in the houses. So this house would have a capacity of 12 people in total. But because, you know, there is no, uh, how to say fill them up system you have to build much more houses than there are people and that you know really creates a bad situation that the houses are not being occupied efficiently and that you have to build a lot more houses than you know actually strictly would be necessary if 
like if if everything would be you know just like efficiently used you might just need like a third of the houses that you actually would have to um build you know in a system where every family just occupies a house you know like i just i just don't i sort of understand it i sort of understand it it's not like in real life people would live with other people that are not your family yeah imagine imagine living with your neighbors in the same house yeah just for efficiency <laughs> reasons <laughs> yeah that's a little bit weird right but like in 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 reality you wouldn't do that so you could say this game is more realistic in that sense but efficient no it's not it's 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 not efficient at all so that is a bit yikes of this game i don't know um so what else <coughs> yeah let's skip time so that it becomes summer or something like that Now you can see some seasonal changes coming. The game doesn't really have, you know, that you can like uh, do like a lot of free viewing. It's really more like a top view type of system. It works. It works. So, I want to just give you know like um, a brief sample of all the different. Oh, oh my God! There's a fire! There's a fire! So here you can see that these houses are on fire. Uh, to be honest, you know like you can just simply demolish these houses. Oh, end the fire! <laughs> end the fire! Easy. Okay, I'm just uh, gonna restore, you know, like these these houses. Oh. That was funny. So we could give them like a priority. So what I'll do, I'll just show uh, everyone like a little bit of the difference between each house that um, exists in this game. Hopefully we'll have, you know, like enough space. So you can build like tents, you can build, you know, like regular houses, you can build like stone houses, you can build like two story houses, you can build uh, brick mansions, and you can build uh, shelters. So basically, what it does, you know, like um, a shelter can give temporary shelter for the people who are like in big trouble so you know you can preferably always have like a shelter in your in, in your town because you never know when when a, a, there's like a huge raging fire that will destroy all of your buildings or or when when all of a sudden there's like a ship that sinks and refugees need to come and uh, uh, hide you know in the houses yeah nom, 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 nom. okay make it a priority still going to take forever again fuck wait <laughs> I think we have a problem. Okay, that's that's no good. Demolish, 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 demolish. <laughs> wow, that 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 was that was pretty fucked up. <laughs> Oh my god, you know, Im imagine, imagine, you know, having to 
having to suffer in the ice cold because uh, of a housing shortage. Fucking hell. Man, that, 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 that was pretty bad. That was pretty bad. Um, so yeah, let me, let me just, um, uh, focus on the shelter instead, yeah. Because, you know, these, these people <laughs> are not going to be too happy suffering like this. My god. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Come on, build it quicker. No, this is ridiculous, you know. I have like so many. So many people there. And still it takes like so much forever before that, that damn thing is finally built. Come on, build it. Because like if you don't build it quickly enough, you know, the people will leave. They will start leaving. Okay. Usually they leave like one second before it actually built, you know? <laughs> yeah, there's a shelter. Oh my god, there's like nine people living in it. Is there still a housing shortage? Oh my god. Okay, well, let's build a tent first. <laughs> Let's build a tent. Hurry up. Build a tent. Oh my god, why is it taking so long? This is also weird, you know. I made this tent a priority, but they're, they're building this house quicker than, than, than the other one. Okay. The house is built. Now... You can insulate it, which you can see reduces the fire, uh, what they call coal upkeep. No. No. Things here certainly didn't go as planned. <laughs> God damn it. See, again, this building is built quicker than the other one, despite this was a priority. Yeah. We have where? Nom, 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 nom. Oh. <coughs> no, they're finally building. Oh my, oh my god! I can't really show the houses now because the trees started growing. <laughs> I, w I wanted to show you, you know, what these houses look like. But they, they took forever to build. No, I can't really show it. Okay, well... Uh, if you don't mind the bushes... Right, this is a tent. <laughs> Fuck you, nature! Fuck you! I wanted to show something, but I can't. Alright. Sideways view, then. <laughs> so this is basically a tent. This is basically um, a regular house. This is basically a stone house, which is then the next upgrade. They, and they are not even done with this house. Come on, hurry up. So I guess you know, like, uh, since this is taking forever, I, I, and, and I can't show it anyway, I better, you know, have a look, you know, at the um, farms. So as you can see, my farms are like um, are, are pretty pretty nice growing. 
here I'm growing like cherries and the cherries are used for the cookies so they need like 600 cherries per year huh? and sometimes they complain oh we can't we can't make the stuff that we want and then you have to make sure you know that enough resources are coming <coughs> here's Bessie the cow you can like um, you, you can create in like a bunch of meats and milk production Sheeps will produce uh, wool and meat. Here you can see the farmers uh, working hard, you know, like on the um, wheat fields. So it's uh, going, it's going pretty well. And they're making like walnuts, apples, chestnuts. Pears, plums, so you know, once you get like all of your research is done, there's quite a lot of uh, variation uh, in, in this game in terms of uh, type of crops that you can uh, grow. Oh, that, that's, that's, that's rather nice. Next up are like uh, the mines. Again, you know, because of the wood, it's a bit hard to see in the, all the forests. This is sort of like an aspect that I hate, you know, this guy is just, you know, like, doing nothing most of the time. What is he doing? He's just tossing it, you know, on this big pile. Holy shit, the bird. <laughs> the bird came! Maybe like your iron mines. I just don't think they produce a lot. And also like another weird aspect of this game is that usually iron is like an expensive commodity. But in this game the price is only one. It means you can buy all the metal in this world for a very very low price. Which is beneficial. Yeah. Coal production is also very 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 low. I just, I just don't know it, you know, what's up with this game with that. <sighs> Did you know what just happened? There were two mm, fruit flies that landed on my elbow having sex. I was like... What the fuck? I'm doing a game review. <laughs> Don't bother me like this. <laughs> okay. So, yuck. That is... I just don't want to think about that. So here's the cathedral and they're complaining about that there's not enough candles coming in. You can see that from the big exclamation uh, mark. So what you have to do in order to keep your society functioning is that you either have to produce these things yourself or you have to make sure that there are like the buildings that produce them. So interesting aspect of this game is the effects that are happening from nearby buildings. So, for instance, we have a Apiari, a very beautiful name. But basically, what it comes down to is that an, an Apiari is a beehive production facility. It's a bit strange, though. Because, you know, they really said, you know, like, if you put it... Yeah, it seems to be like this, you know, like, if it's, like, near a forest, then the efficiency becomes higher. But what I've heard, you know, like, is that, like, if you put these buildings nearby these apple orchards and, and whatnot, uh, the bees will produce, like, um, additional... foods and honey 
and like with the honey you can sort of start making a candle shop yeah you know, candle shop so you have like a candle shop over here again you know like I can only do this because I have like some workers left but normally in the beginning of the game it's just so freaking impossible because it's just so hard to get any decent amount of people so another interesting thing is that you can like build uh, warehouses you know a small depot I think I'm in the wrong location actually is it a prediction building yeah you can buy like a small depot which is actually very very low amount of money 30 coins and 15 lumber just to build it if you go you know for the middle one I also think it's a bit strange that none of these things are sort of like uh, close nearby each other So I have to search it again. Where the hell is it? Clay pit API warehouse. So you have like a, a middle warehouse, which then all of a sudden costs like 400. And this one basically can contain five times. Yeah, my head is a little bit in front of it. This one basically can contain like five times the amount. And you have like a, a large warehouse, and that one can like contain like a capacity of like 50,000 you know like if you build like a huge large warehouse warehouses are important you have to put them close nearby production buildings so that they can facilitate as a storage room for all of the workers and uh, whatnot <coughs> uh, for the time being you know my my country is lacking you know a lot of candles so I'll buy you know like 700 candles and it's also like lacking a lot of iron but as I said you know iron you can just buy on the cheap 700 iron for only 700 like if I have to do that IRL you know I'll be so fucked and another thing that's is a bit difficult is that oh resources required in production are not arriving in this building requires resources are missing in stock and not enough workers are, but you never can see what is it what they need do they need eggs do they need cherries do they need flour do they need firewood do they need money i it, it's just it's just not visible anywhere and i, I think that is like a bit of a, another bad aspect i think it would be better if they could actually just show what is it exactly what is missing in this uh, in this game so on the overall you know when when i would l look you know like at the graphics of this game i would say that the graphics are reasonable you know Albeit there's not much variation in, in the cows, you know, I mean, they all look the freaking same because they are the same. Which I could also increase, you know, why not put like a black and white cow in it? Why not put a completely brown cow or a white cow or something like that? that I think that would add some nice variation to the game. Sheep also look always the same. Like, another thing that is sort of standing out for me is that, like, in the past, when I was playing, you know, Stronghold, when you clicked on a person, they would say something nice. They would say something like, Good day, my lord, how are you doing? Nice to see you, my leech. And... You know the people when you when you click on them they they have nothing to say and they, they they don't say hello how are you or it's bad weather today or you know i think the designers developers of pattern could 
add something to that. I think graphic wise I'm I'm pretty satisfied with how how they made this game. I mean little houses look cute as I said before. And you really get a sensation of fisheries, harbors. I guess maybe I don't know, this light could use a little bit of an upgrade, I don't know. Maybe it would be nicer if you actually had you know, you have to build like a lighthouse or something like that to keep ships from <laughs> crashing. I don't know. That, that 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 could be interesting, right? But on the other hand, I, I would also say, okay, you know, this this also functions. I'm not sure what. Um, what am I supposed to do here though, but, yeah. So the apiary is uh, completed and uh, honey and whatnot will be created. But as you can see, the game is just so slow. Like, you order 700 candles, it takes forever to be built. Because it needs to be shipped all the way from the mainland. I like it, by the way, how, how they added some natural life in this game. And I have, like, these seals. And sometimes they also put, like, some interesting art decoration. Like, these ships also look rather reasonable. It's, still, like, a little bit like a, a ship in a bottle, but I, I like it. I think it's, it's uh, nicely enough made. I mean, graphics-wise, I, I don't think there's anything spectacular in this game. It's not like special effects, no VSX uh, or, or any other great things. Yeah, there's sometimes a little, little, little castle up in the in this in in the mountains from um, long times passed by. But I don't see any anything that is like really outstanding that you say like whoa 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 I've never seen anything like this before in my life no not nothing like that at all nothing like that at all so I guess you know that is like a bit of a a, a shame there's no I don't know special events or something like that. Well, well, I, I guess, you know, uh, I don't know, meteorite shower or something like that. <laughs> UFO attack, just like in SimCity. <laughs> no, I, I guess the game doesn't have to have those kinds of things. So, I guess speeding things up a little bit. Uh, which month am I living now? It's now May. Now it's gonna gonna take a while before uh, winter sets in again. So all all in all, in order to get things done and to get things built, um, I'm just like a little bit shocked, you know, like how much time this uh, game consumes. Like also like with the. The, the building of, of houses and whatnot it, it just uh, it's just a little bit painful so to speak I wonder if my yeah so once the candles come in the church stops complaining uh, schools also need candles and firewood to you know keep the students able to keep learning and whatnot let's see if I can like um, add like a bunch of people to to this place I don't know what we are in. 
Yeah, let's let's create like a bunch of people that like uh, work in here. Uh, what is this? Yeah, let's let's have like three people that work in here. So I don't have much people left anymore. Uh, expansion, oh, your younglings. My lord, I have been approached by some shady figure. They know the city's in a rough spot and claim they're willing to help, but the price, what would the plan? They want some of our young people. Unfortunately, I can likely guess what the plans are with them. So, you can, you can do like two things, you know, you can sell off your children <laughs> for, for, for 609 letters. 448 uh, fish and plum and the happiness decreases with 25 it's a bad ID absolutely a bad ID because I have a counter proposal shackle them up and send them to the mail let the Kings deal yeah if you do this happiness increases so here you see how my wheat fields and all the farms are just um, doing a great job So here, here they're making, you know, starting to make uh, candles and whatnot. You know, by you can increase the production. It's very important. <coughs> the more they produce, you know, the better, right? Let them, let them produce, you know, like as much honey as possible. So, a question would be, you know, is this game? worthwhile the money it's like twenty dollar ish I would say uh, I would say I I think the game has a pretty short lifespan because you know I was basically able to complete this game within two weeks so I think if you're like interested in a city building game and you have like tons of time in your life it's not a problem for you time time is time is not an issue so to speak I would say, yeah, hell, go for it, you know, 20. But if you don't have the time and patience, this game is not for you. Even with speeding up time, I just think, you know, how long it takes before people are born. Even in my case scenario, I'm, I'm, I'm still suffering. I'm still suffering. And I, I'm still annoyed buy the game because like they say oh we're producing 1350 cookies per year but then when you're like looking at your stock like oh how many cookies do i actually have how many cookies can i can i sell oh zero you know what the fuck what the fuck why, why is it zero you know why is it zero I, I just don't I just don't understand that and also you know like I have like all these cherry fields and whatnot you see them all blooming <sighs> like why why are there like no cherries why why are there like no Oh yeah, the, why, why are there like zero, zero cherries? I like three chestnuts. I think there was actually a way in this game to block people from eating certain stuff. Uh, how was it again? I think, I think maybe if you go to like one of those warehouses, you could actually um, block, block, block them, you know, from, from eating it. Uh, let me let me have a look to see if I can like block the people from eating cookies. <laughs> Sorry, no cookies for you today. 
So, cookies, right? Um, oh, the royal tax increases. The crown has uh, endeavors all around the globe and it's the duty of each sub to make that happen. From now on, the king is raising taxes on certain goods. The iron trade fee increases to 19%. Yeah, I guess I have to increase loyalty because you know like the the people the people are constantly freaking complaining. So what happens then is that once you look at the the price of iron, you see that the fee has become like 5%. That's because I have another decree that uh, sort of makes it so that um, People can easily uh, trade stuff. So, trade customs. Uh, you actually can choose decrees that um, make it so that uh, your city is governed in a certain way. So, uh, what is this? Tributes. <coughs> Coins per merchant and gentry. You can give people tax cuts, probably will make them happy. And trade customs, yeah, this is the one that I'm using. So it reduces the trade tax by 15%. This is an extremely valuable and important decree because it means that you can ship good goods over the country, over the world for free. Okay, so finally it, it has become, you know, like winter. And I can just show these houses in a decent way. So the most primitive thing in terms of house building that this game has is building tents. Only four residents can live in it. It does cost much, but it it costs leather. It costs leather, so you have to pay like three leather and th uh, two lumber to make it. It's very basic. No, nobody wants to live in here so like the moment you have like a better house uh, like this is like uh, a normal this is like really just like your basic standard house now let's insulate it so that the people are like uh, more warmer in here next to that you have like a stone house so, so what is, you know, like the difference between all of these uh, locations? In that sense, there isn't really much of a difference other than the amount of people that can be housed in it. I haven't seen, you know, like a big difference otherwise than that. Maybe there's like a, a, a something else that I haven't seen. Maybe. But it would mean that the more people you can store in one house like the more people would be in the nearby vicinity of a market in, in a circle which means that the more people there are in the houses the more money you could make of them <clears throat> so as i said before in the beginning of this game this game has a really important circular effect that everything that is close by in the vicinity um, will get sort of like a stacked bonus. This doesn't only count for houses, but it also counts for mines. If mines are put closely together, or if you know related buildings are putting close together in terms of um, I don't know in terms of quarries, but I know in terms of uh, herbalists. Like if you put a which is a pretty much you know important. Uh, house uh, where is the damn thing there should be like a healers I wonder if a healer is actually um, in Harbor Church healers house yeah here's a healers house so if you put them nearby the herbalists it really gives sort of a bonus but those bonuses are like not given and unless you um, really research it 
So, for instance, this um, cleared path increase the herbalist efficiency if near a gatherer's shelter. Yeah. So, for that reason, you would want to put. This is uh, where is it? This is a gatherer's shelter, right? So you would want to put one of these buildings, I don't know, something like this. Oh. So, so you don't even have to occupy the building with people. Purely make sure that this house is, is, is nearby the herbalist ones. And you can then get like a 20% increase in bonus. So this is very important. Make sure that you stock up your bonuses in order to get like extra efficiency in, in your economy. So even though this balancing game is very hard, if you manage to make good use of the decrees that you get, you know, in terms of, of bonuses, and, and every decree must be researched. It's pretty hard, but you will be able to make sure that uh, a lot of uh, interesting uh, things uh, can happen uh, for your for your economy. So it is like divided by government, economy, production, and social. If you have sort of like a secular society, it's sort of anti-religious. Uh, church and state, not sure what that is, but church efficiency goes up. You can uh, like increase it. Well, for me, it's also like, is there a need to do that? Here, religion is already 98%, you know, there's like no reason to put it up higher because people are already pretty happy with uh, my policy okay they, they they aren't so super happy about my my loyalty but you can see but because I, I did a decree that supported the king the peasants here have uh, left you know they're happy oh he showed some some loyalty to to the king, so you know she doesn't have to, you know, like pay that. that you know they don't have to complain that much about me anymore. You know. So, uh, all in all, it's uh, going pretty well with the city. And I, I just think, you know, that this um, makes, you know, a um, interesting uh, building game because there is uh, a lot of balancing to do. <laughs> this is also a bit of a strange aspect, you know, there's like just like a fucking bear <laughs> walking here through the city. Now, for instance, strongholds, the bear would kill all the people and you will have to send warriors to deal with all of the wildlife you have to have like warrior warriors that kill uh, the wolves and the bears but yeah here bears and wolves and all kinds of wildlife just live in harmony <laughs> with the people <laughs> it's funny as hell right it's funny as hell yeah So uh, yeah, this was sort of like uh, a little impression of Patron. I didn't really cover, you know, like the full game. And I must also say, you know, this game is pretty new. So uh, yeah, who, who knows what's more to come. But at this moment, there's no real goal in the game other than, you know, building a society. It's not like, oh, you have to gather 10,000 coins for the king. Or you have to save up uh, 5,000 herbs in order to 
make a trade deal and save the country or something like that. Uh, th th there's no such challenges like that in the game. It might be more interesting if there are also like uh, scenarios in, in the game because uh, the game is is uh, still pretty bland in in, in in terms... I guess, you know, like... <coughs> Uh, SimCity is also like a builder game that just goes into in infinite. There's really no purpose other than uh, building for the benefit of the people or something like that. And I think, you know, this game falls in that same category. It's a completely different building style like SimCity and... Um, other than the disaster of fire, I haven't seen any things like uh, earthquakes or floodings, <coughs> no Godzilla attack, no Bowser attack, no nothing like that. So, you know, the biggest disaster in this game so far is fire. And... Um, if you manage to <coughs> mess up, it will be starvation or people dying from cold and they will be leaving your city uh, <laughs> because it's too cold. <coughs> well, other, other than that, you know, um, I would say it's a, it's a decent little building game. But I wouldn't rate this game, you know, like uh, top notch or something like that. So, like, if my, I would give my final rating for this game from zero to ten, I would give it a six point five. Uh, graphics are good and. Uh, Playability is uh, not so good due to the extreme waiting times. Uh, the economy is heavily unbalanced. It just doesn't make sense with a lot of things. I just don't. I just don't think that. Uh, the economic prices make any sense uh, especially that it's more beneficial to import goods rather than to produce them yourself in, in a lot of ac aspects like with the clay factory being much too expensive and other buildings requiring so much upkeep uh, you know, it just drains your economy. If you don't do very careful balancing, uh, this this game is really going to totally screw you over, so to speak. Uh, the music and overall is very nice. I would definitely be happy if they added some additional soundtracks because it's quite monotonous. It's the same song over and 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 over again. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, so my my overall general feeling is that I I probably won't be playing this game much. It's just not exciting enough. Uh, there's just no goals in it. Uh, it's peaceful for building, but I th I think <clears throat> this game is really only for the more uh, hardcore uh, SimCity slash society building gamers. Uh, I like those games. I, 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 I like this game in terms of uh, the building aspect, but I just am like 
so irritated how long it takes for people to actually be born and to become like a part of the working force. I think it's not unreasonable to speed up the time that people are aging by a factor of three at least a factor of three maybe even five because it's it's just absurd how long yeah it's it's realistic that it would take long you know for the people to uh, grow old but and, and taking so much time but Time, time is a valuable thing for a gamer, you know. You don't have all the time in the world to play games. Y even if you have all the time, you know, you don't want to wait that long for people to join this workforce. So, what happens in this game is that in the beginning of the game, you have way too little amount of people and at the end of the game, when you're like rich and wealthy and whatnot, you get too many people. And I just think that with this game, if you look at the the decree of like the um, immigration incentive, you you can actually. Uh, create you know like an, an, an Im immigration incentive so that um, people are, are coming more inside of your your city so immigration is plus 30 percent the problem is that this immigration incentive costs a whopping 15 60 coins a year now like when you're rich you know it doesn't really matter much because you'll have the money but like in the beginning when you're just starting playing out the game you just don't have that kind of money you just don't have it you know where are you supposed to get that kind of money from so that is that is like uh, quite an um, yeah I, I think that that makes this game so sad I think that really ruined the game for me, that it, it just takes so much effort to... Uh, well, effort, I mean, mostly gobbles up so much time for, for people to come. And it costs so much money for people to immigrate, you know. You, you can't enjoy this game because you're constantly being blocked by too little amount of people, too little amount of people. You have to wait, 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 wait. I know that waiting is, you know, like part of any city building game, society building game, whatever. <clears throat> I mean, there's a certain waiting time with strongholds. There's a certain waiting time with SimCity. There's a certain waiting time with uh, Sit Civilization, you know? <clears throat> but this game tops it all. I have never had to wait so incredibly long before people would finally be born, be able to work, be able to do stuff. Uh, it, it just totally threw me off. If they can improve that on this game, that will definitely be the most helpful factor. Because, you know, in the end it's about do you enjoy a game or not, you know? And I know challenges are like part of the game. But this is this is this has got nothing to do with challenge, you know, this is just purely a waste of time. So, for God's sakes, developers of Pattern, make it so that this game doesn't take that long to have people to grow and become actual laborers of this uh, city. And, and maybe you could also have like a, a policy, like a, a governmental decree where you can just say, 
people living together, you know, so that's people would be forced to <laughs> live together rather than having like all these open spaces with these houses creating these ga inefficient gaps. Uh, it, it would just save, you know, so much time and money and, and, and whatnot. It's, it's, it's pretty sad. It's pretty sad. Um, actually, now that I think of it, what is also important of this game is to have like a big variation of foods. Um, people will complain if they only have to eat fish. <laughs> like I had that with my game. I only let them eat fish for years on end. And they didn't, they didn't, they didn't like it. And they start complaining about basic goods. And that is something that was also not really described well. Because in this game, they say, oh, you know, your people are complaining about basic goods. And like, they like firewood and food. But I had like thousands of fish and I had like thousands of firewood. And I was like, what the fuck are they complaining about? Well, what they are complaining about is the lack of variation in foods. So that is also like an important thing to remember. Make sure that you have like a lot, some, some variation in food. And um, that is like also one thing that I didn't really understand with this game. I had like uh, people working at this mushroom farm, but somehow it never took off. Mushrooms were never really well produced, it's like inventory empty. I just didn't understand it and I still don't understand it. I don't understand why it's taking up um, so much time and space, and it's it's actually not producing much. I was just I was just weirded out by that. Mm, strange. Well, I pretty much uh, completed this game. I um, want to say yeah, there there there's there's more stuff uh, in this game. Like, you have, like, in the options, uh, what is it? Mark. Um, I, I just had it somewhere, right? Okay. How, how was it, wait, just, let me just, like, um, exit it for one second. A bit strange, can you go to, like, the options? Uh, let's... Play the pattern. So, I haven't really uh, tried. You know, there's like options. I'm probably gonna kill myself <laughs> if I see that there's like an option to to quicker. You know, to make citizens grow quicker. No, nah, it doesn't seem to exist. Modifications, mods. Yeah, it's a bit strange that there is like no list of mods that you can like download or whatever. I mean like that you can just like see it in, in here, you know, that you could just like download modifications from this panel rather than going on the internet searching for your life, you know, what it is. Uh, Oh yeah, there's like there's like the manual as well. I might read the manual one day. <laughs> no, I I'm, I'm definitely not gonna read the manual. I, I'm pretty I'm pretty much more of a person who just likes to dive into a game and then uh, try all of this stuff out. Um, yeah. So. Here they also say it, you know, as noted before, everything in pattern takes time. And at times if you're the master or there will be something that there's not much for you to do. To make it possible to jump ahead a bit, you can use the time to speed up the passage of time at your discretion. But in all honesty, this is not fun. This is not fun. Like, 
instead of you know demanding from the user to constantly skip ahead of time you can also think the other way around and make certain processes go quicker and in this case again you know the growing of children uh, and and making them into adults uh, uh. <coughs> So you can choose, you know, in the beginning from different islands as well. It's actually pretty surprising in, in, in this game that you actually only deal with islands. There's never that you're like part of the mainland. I think the reason for this is because they wanted to sort of have like a trading economy with with the harbors no well, the manual looks nice it, it explains everything you know like in uh, in a decent way and if you're into manuals you can like uh, read everything and how how the stuff works but i must say that even without reading the manual this uh, game is very understandable so that's a good plus of this game that it's very understandable in, in how everything works i only had like some some difficulty in understanding you know like the trading aspects trading deals at the harbor but other than that, you know, the game is pretty much self-explanatory. And it did a, you know, rather nice job of entertaining me, you know, a little bit for these three weeks. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a game that you go through very quick. And as I said before, you know, I would only buy this game if you're like completely city building uh, freak so to speak if you're like really into um, you know city building games I'm I'm pretty much a person who likes this uh, type of, uh, of games but you know if, if I'm just honest I think you know that uh, my my preference would still be, you know, like Stronghold 2 over this game. Why am I saying that? Uh, it's not because I, I dislike this 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 game or anything in 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 the sense of uh, how stuff is looking graphic wise. I just think uh, that you know Stronghold 2, which is an older game, I'm gonna admit that immediately. Had more like a also like a, a fighting uh, aspect. So you had to have like a building aspect, producing aspects. You know, it had all these aspects that pattern had. Also medieval aspects, but it also had you know uh, castle building, soldiers, and having to fight off other enemies and 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 whatnot. Um, so. I mean, it had the windmills, it had, you know, the production of all kinds of uh, pigs and apples and, and, and wheat and, you know, bakeries, all these things that that pattern also has, but it, it just had more than that. So, I mean, I already completed Stronghold too, so you know, like for me, I didn't want to regurgitate the game that many times even though i have played it like many times so pattern pattern was a, a nice game for me as you know just something fresh something new but 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 overall you know i i, I can't say that i'm like wow so super happy about it Again, you know, my biggest complaint is about 
the amount that it takes for people to actually grow up and become part of your society. Um, but yeah, maybe if the developers fix this or if you're like, okay, I'm okay with that. That's not a problem for me. I'm just putting like the skip button and fine. Then, then this game can still be uh, worthwhile. In terms of price, I, I again, you know, I just don't think that the game is worth it in terms of the price. I think if the game was around nine dollars, uh, I think it would be uh, more, you know representative of what the game has to offer in in comparison to uh you know what what kind of entertainment you get delivered from it because you know like if you can like complete this game within three weeks from beginning to start you know uh, it's really kind of yikes is this really worth my money i would say no not really no, not not for this price nine dollars is far more fair price for this this kind of game even though i understand you know that the developers put like a, a lot of uh, work uh, and effort to make it i just I, I'm, I'm, I'm just not seeing it, you know, in, in terms of quality gameplay um, and whatnot. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be harsh, but, you know, that is, like, really how I, how I feel about this game. So, like, in the $9 range, I would say it would be a fair price for, um, and, you know, the, the, the amount of entertainment that you get delivered for it. You know, since the, the game doesn't have, like a lifespan more than three weeks uh, then I just think you know that would be like a more fair price if you would really have you know like a a game like Genshin Impact or something like that you know it's like a game that you can like um, play for free even and you know if you think about how far more expanded the world is and you, you can like uh, enjoy so much more okay you know like Genshin Impact also has like a grinding problem you know it's really a typical gacha game but what I'm trying to say is you know that for, for, for less money you, you you could enjoy certain games for a longer period of time than, than what you can do with Patron I just don't think that the lifespan of Patron is that high because other than building buildings in this game there's really not much more to do so yeah that is my final review i uh, hope uh, everyone uh, enjoyed uh, this review um please watch uh, also you know like my other videos on my uh, youtube channel i'm also available on twitch dark eternal underscore 666 on twitch and then you can talk to me live wow all right, bye-bye, everybody. See you next time.